several years ago when I was just starting out preaching. Um, I'd been preaching a little while, already married. There's a man told me, he said, when you start going through things in your ministry, there'll be a lot of stuff you have to keep from your wife. And uh, I'm still waiting on those things to come up. I, uh, I just went to her a little bit this afternoon. I said, baby, I need you to pray with me. The Lord's given me a word for tonight. And there's a lot of, lot of different situations. And then I told them to her. And uh, I said, I need you to help me pray. Now, she's going to be mad at me when I get through saying this. Not just because I know her, but I mean, and I love her and I respect her, but she can't whoop me. But uh, she's running a fever tonight. She's sick. And she texted me and said, I'm running a fever. And I texted her back and I said, Oh, no. I said, I need you, baby. She said, oh, I'm coming to church. I just want you to pray for me. And I thank God for the wife that I that he's given me. She's the best part of me. She is the best part of me. Because you know when you join together before God, you are one. That's what the book says, Brother Pete. So she's the best part of me, and I, I can tell you she's tapped into the Holy Ghost with that song right there. Well, let's do it. Come on, baby. Praise the Lord. I'm glad Brother Pete said that. Now I won't be in trouble. Brother McKinney, come help me pray for my wife. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Catherine, you go to church in Tally. My daddy used to pastor a church in Tally. I bet it was before you were born, though. It's a pool hall or something now, right there in the middle of town. Yeah. But we used to have some throw-down church over there. Yeah, 83, 84, and 85 is when daddy pastored over there. I just saw that. We got some more Tally folks in here, too, by the way. I have a word from the Lord tonight. You can be seated. It's a little different than what I normally preach. I've tried to tell you before, preachers are people too, right? And Brother David, this ain't my first time around the mulberry bush. And... uh I know, Brother Billy, just soon, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt, and I'm preaching now, by the way, so just because just I don't have my coat off yet, don't get worried. I know, saints of God, as you well do, I knew it as soon as the first one was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I knew it when we begin to feel the liberty course through this place as it has that as sure as the Lord was blessing in a mighty, in my hopes and my prayers in an unprecedented way, that the devil was going to begin to go to work. 
The only time that the devil don't mess with us is when we're not messing with him. If we'll leave him alone, he'll leave us alone. Amen. But when we start reaching out and allowing God to work through us to save people from the, from the clutches of hell and from the influence of the devil, he is going to immediately begin to work on people's lives. The book of Jeremiah is where I'll be coming to you from tonight. The book of Jeremiah is written, ironically as it is, or dictated by the prophet Jeremiah. And due to the autobiographical, autobiographical nature of the book, we get more insight into his life that, and his character and the times in which he lived than any other Hebrew prophet. Jeremiah was called directly by God, Brother Pete, he was called directly by God to be a minister of the gospel of that day. The Lord was quick to let Jeremiah know with the in, the, the, his initial calling that he was, knew him. He knew who he was speaking to. The Lord God let it be known plainly, I haven't made a mistake. You are the man that I'm looking for. He very plainly declared to him and let him know before you were in your mama, I knew you. Hallelujah. We got this messed up idea that we think uh, until we come to church that the Lord doesn't know who we are. I come to tell you that he's been knowing you since before your mom and daddy knew you. Hallelujah. Before I formed thee in the belly, God said, I knew thee. Before you were brought forth in birth, I sanctified thee or I set you apart for a purpose. And it was a specific work I ordained you to do to be a prophet unto the nations. Now, I'm gonna, before I go any further, and I'm not being a wet blanket, I'm not being a killjoy, but I'd like for the moving around to be at a bare minimum. I've got a word from the Lord tonight. And the devil would like nothing better than to distract a lot of folks by a lot of goings on. So if you can, hold it till I'm done. If you can't, just cut her loose and blame it on me. I'm just teasing. But please, please, bear with me. If your neighbor goes to sleep, nudge him. This is important. The devil, the thief, this is not in my notes, but I got to tell you, I got to remind you, the thief cometh not but for, but for to kill, steal, and destroy. I'm going to help somebody find a way tonight to put a stop to that. Jeremiah wasn't too enamored with the idea of being a minister of the gospel. And he even gave the Lord an excuse, Brother Robbie, as to why he shouldn't be in the position God wanted. He said, I'm too young. I'm, I'm not old enough. I'm not mature enough. They won't take me seriously. But God said, don't say that again. Oh, it's an amazing thing when the Lord takes our excuses away from us. It's an amazing thing when the Lord tells us to shut our mouth and stop going against His will even when it concerns us. You shall go to everybody I send you, the Lord said, and you'll do whatever I command you, and that's what you're going to say is the words I put in your mouth. He said, don't worry about their reaction to you. Just remember that you are accountable to me. Speak what I say, speak. And then he said, I am with you to deliver you. Everybody say that. What do you think about that? Any time, Brother Pete, that the Lord God Almighty says, I am, with anything, he's declaring himself. He said, I am with you to deliver you. I am with you. To deliver you. Turn to your neighbor and say he's with you. To deliver you. Turn to another neighbor and say he's with you. To deliver you. 
Not to beat you up. Not to slam you down. Not to ridicule you. Not to stand before you in judgment. But he's with you to deliver you. And then the Lord put forth his hand, the Bible said. And he touched Jeremiah's mouth. And said, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Then he said, See, I have set this this day, set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, and then to build and plant. The effect, Brother Billy, will first be destruction. The Lord came to bring division. It will be destructive. It will be tear down, root out, pull down, destroy. But then it will be construction, building again. Seeing that Jeremiah was, for the most part, he was a prophet of correction and a prophet of judgment and a prophet of the coming doom because of their apostasy. If they had not fell away from God, if they'd not turned their back on God, Jeremiah wouldn't have a job to do. But because they turned away from God, the Lord touched the mouth of Jeremiah and sent him to be a prophet to the nations. Seeing as Jeremiah was a prophet of damnation and a prophet of judgment and a prophet of the coming overthrow by Babylonians among others, he also offered Brother Billy of a hope that was very soon to come. Jeremiah 31, 33 through 34 says, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach, I want you to see this right now. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, Know the Lord. No longer will, the plan is, Brother McKinney, for no longer for people to have to go and say, Let me introduce you to the Lord. Let me tell you about the Lord. They don't have to go to their neighbor because the Bible said, For they shall all know me. From the least Unto the greatest, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Everybody say no more. The plan, Brother Billy, Brother McKinney, the plan is to change the world. The plan is to save the world. The plan is uh, that every man, woman, boy, or girl that's alive knows who Jesus is. The plan is uh, for us to spread the gospel uh, in such a dynamic, powerful way that everybody we meet, uh, whether they receive him, whether they accept him or not, they know who he is. That's the plan. That's the plan. That's what he has in mind. That's what he has in mind. This is an amazing hope. Not just for those people, but also in the mind of God. That is the hope of God. He is speaking his plan for his people. That's what he desires, is that everybody, Sister Casey, that we don't stop. That we don't stop till the whole world knows that he's a great God. That we don't stop. That we don't stop. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost up in this place. We've got to have a revelation tonight, Brother McKinney. We've got to have a revelation that the devil's aim is not to defeat us. The devil's aim is to stop the spread of this glorious fire of the Holy Ghost that the Lord is pouring out in this little community, on this little building. That's the plan of God. He'll do it by hook. Or excuse me, the plan of the devil. He'll do it by hook or by crook, by deceit, or just wide open, blatant disobedience. But he wants to stop the flow of the Holy Ghost. 
God has a great hope for his people. But it's the devil's responsibility. It's the devil's responsibility to make us go blind and lose sight of that hope. Jeremiah 29 and 11, I preached on it a few services ago. It was in our bulletin this morning. The King James Version says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. What we've got to do, saints of God, is we've got to get our mind lined up with his mind. We have got, oh, we've got to realize what he thinks about us, what he thinks about our church, what he thinks about our city, what he has in store for this church to do. I know the thoughts that I think of you. I know what I'm thinking about you. I know what I've got for you in my mind. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. These are God's people. These people that Jeremiah has been sent to. Brother Billy, they are the people of God. And he loves them. They are his children, and he loves them. They are his chosen people, and he loves them. Can I tell you tonight uh, that you are God's chosen child, uh, and he loves you? Uh, Can I tell you I don't care what you've done, uh, where you're going, uh, what you're going through, uh, or who you've been, uh, or who you've been with? Bless God. uh, You are his child, uh, and he loves you. He has high hopes for you and for our church uh, and for our community. He has high hopes. Throughout his ministry, throughout his ministry, Brother David, one could argue that Jeremiah was not very effective. From all appearances, now I want you to stay with me now. Please stay with me. Please. Your life may depend on it. I can make an argument that your life depends upon every service that we have here. Jeremiah, from all appearances, was not very effective in his ministry. It appears that he died alone, a broken, lonely old man. In Egypt, cast out of his homeland, having convinced no one to stay true to God and to obey his commandments. Now I got to let you know something before I go any further. There's a qualifier to this. That ain't the plan for us. That's not the case with us. God's going to have a church and he's going to have a church in New Matter, Missouri that loves God and preaches truth and loves people and can change the world. Even though his calling, the power and the specific nature of his calling were unrivaled among men. Isaiah, Daniel, Moses, David, etc. They were all blessed. They were all called with a mighty calling. But no more blessed than Jeremiah in his first encounter with God. No more blessed than Jeremiah was to have the hand of God touch his mouth. To have the Lord say, I am with you to deliver you. That means in whatever he's in, the Lord is going to deliver him. Jeremiah struggled in his ministry. He struggled throughout his ministry. He faced huge obstacles. Sometimes he encouraged himself. Can I tell you, you can encourage yourself? The Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Jeremiah 20 and 9, we see an instance of of Jeremiah encouraging himself. Because Jeremiah said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. Brother Shannon, Jeremiah had decided, I'm done. It ain't worth it. I ain't preaching no more. I'm not speaking in the name of the Lord anymore. I will not make mention of him nor speak anymore in his name. But, 
But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. That ain't the spirit. We like to sing that it's like it's the Holy Ghost in Jeremiah. Jeremiah didn't have the Holy Ghost. But Jeremiah had the word of God. He had a word from God. The Lord had touched his mouth. And there was a word that was placed in him. And even though he decided to give up, Brother Billy. And I was weary with forbearing. Now, I'm about to move on from this. I'm not going to stay here long. As a matter of fact, I'm probably not going to preach much longer. I ain't even got to my sermon yet. This is just so y'all think I ain't lost my mind. He said, I got tired of holding back the word. That's what that means, Brother David. He said, I decided I'm not going to preach the word no more. But I couldn't contain it any longer. I couldn't contain the word that was hid in my heart. Saints of God, I've been preaching around here. I've been teaching around here, telling you, yelling to you, trying to encourage you. Hide that word down in your heart. You don't ever know when there's a time when all hell is going to bust loose against you. But there's going to be a word from the Lord. There's going to be a word that's hid down deep in your belly. That's going to come forth with all the anointing and with all the power and all the fire. And you can encourage yourself in the Lord. Can't keep it shut. He encouraged himself. And then sometimes the Lord had to encourage him. I said sometimes the Lord had to encourage him. Why would he keep encouraging him? Because I know the thoughts that I think of you. Because I knew you before you were in your mama. Because I sanctified you from your mother's womb. Because I ordained you a preacher to the nations. In this particular case, Brother Terry, thank you for your song tonight. In this particular case, Jeremiah is concerned with why the wicked continue to prosper. Why are they happy and continue to live treacherously or dangerously? It appears, Lord, Jeremiah said that you have planted them, that they have taken root and begin to grow and they bring forth fruit. Lord, you are near in their mouths, Jeremiah said, but you're far away from their hearts. And then Jeremiah says, here's what I want you to do. I've had it. I want you to reach down and pull them out of the flock. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter. Set them apart for destruction. Prepare them for slaughter. I want them gone. But I want you to notice what the Lord says to him. Jeremiah is saying, now let me don't don't let me go there yet, Brother Shannon. Jeremiah is saying, I've had all I can stand. It ain't fair. That's what he said, Brother Robbie. It ain't fair how they can keep doing wrong. Never molested, though in the wrong. I'm sick of them. I want them out of here. I want you to root them up, and I want you to get rid of them, Lord. You blessed them. You put them here. You planted here. It's your mess. Get rid of them. If I wasn't so excited, it'd be hard to preach tonight. Jeremiah 12 and 5. This is my text. The Lord led me to this and spoke it clear as a bell to me this morning. So don't think any events that have happened today have caused this message. God gave this to me before any of you got here this morning before church. If thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with the horses? And if in the land of peace 
Wherein thou trustest, if they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling or in the pride or in the thicket of Jordan? The battle is just beginning, Jeremiah. This has just been a test. Is your so commitment so weak that just running with the footman has worn you down? Oh, you don't understand, Jeremiah. I have bigger foes for you to defeat. I have bigger devils for you to cast out. I have bigger giants for you to slay. I have greater things for you to do. If you can't make it right now, you can't expect to make it down the road. How can you run with the horses? How can you expect to run with the horses if you are weary with the footmen? The spiritual metaphor here is that people are on the same level. When you run with the footmen, you're running with your peers. You're running with people on the same level as you. But you are not destined to stay running with the flesh. But you are intended to run above your capabilities. You're intended to run above your talents. You're intended to run above your intellect. But you are intended to run above yourself greater than your abilities. If you're weary in the land of peace, in the land where the battle is mild, how do you expect to wage war in the thickets of Jordan's banks? The thickets along the banks of the Jordan River were very thick and hard to see through and virtually impossible to travel through. And in these thickets resided many wild animals, especially lions. God has called us to a task. Please hear me right now. God has called us to a task. I'm really glad we got a few pastor appreciation cards this afternoon. I thank you for them. You might have not given them to me after tonight. God has called us to a task, Brother Pete, that's bigger than us. He has called us to a task that's beyond our realm of comprehension, that is beyond our ability, that's beyond our talent, that many times is even beyond our vision. He has called us, according to the first scripture that I read, He has called us to win the world, to win our world, to spread the gospel among every nation. How? How can we expect to win the world when we can't even get out of our own backyard? How can we expect to conquer the world when we haven't even conquered ourselves? Brother Pete, because we have yet to step over into the realm of 100% trusting in God. Some, some trust in horses. And some in chariots. But we, we will remember the name. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. What you've got to see, saints of God, is the one sitting next to you ain't your enemy. The one down the road ain't your enemy. We have one common enemy, and that's the devil. That's the accuser of the brethren. That's the one that's trying to destroy us. That came to kill, steal, and destroy. Get your eyes off what's around you and lift your heels to eyes to the hills from which cometh your help. Just in the short time that we've been seeing the Lord work, we have also come under attack. One of the problems, now please, I want you to understand me when I say this. Brother McKinney, I know you will. One of the problems is that generally the only world you see is the one you live in. The world that I see is all of them combined. Just in the short time we've been seeing the Lord work, we have also come under a very harsh attack. Health, finances, and relationships. Some trivial, some serious, but all distracting nevertheless.
That's the trouble. In case one of you gets mad and thinks I'm just preaching at you, you're right. But also the whole rest of you. You say, well, I ain't calling you no more. That's not true. You will. I want you to. But sometimes the Lord has to touch my mouth and give me a word to tell you. And all I'm trying to say, Brother Manning, it's going to be all right. As long as we get our vision in the right place. As long as we get our eyes in the right place. If the devil can keep you distracted with these little penny any things that's going on in our lives, and I in no mean mean to diminish what's going on, but you, the, the little thing that's around you ain't the goal in the first place. That's not your destination. That's not what God had in store for you. He thinks big thoughts for you. He has big plans for you. He has big dreams for you. What a victory it'd be, Brother Shannon, for the devil to be able to tear down this great big vision that God has over an attitude. Or over a dollar. Or over a toothache. Naked came out from my mama, and naked I'm going back. Uh, Brother Rice, we talked about it this morning. I ain't taking nothing with me. If I die right now, somebody's going to get every bit of money out of my pocket. Uh, somebody's going to get my stuff. I can't take nothing with me. Naked came I, and naked shall I go. The Lord hath given, and the Lord hath taken away. But I wish somebody would rise up and say, But blessed be the name of the Lord. That's what I'm talking about uh, is somebody that doesn't get drugged down by the distractions around you, but you lift up your head, uh, you open up your ear, you open up your eyes uh, and see Jesus. I'm sorry, I'm being crazy. That's just who I, that's just who I, am. God bless. I didn't want to scare nobody. Poor Miss Melba thought I was dying with a heart attack the other night. I might. But you know what, Brother Billy? What a way to go. Oh, what a way. Oh, there ain't nothing make me happier than to die preaching the gospel. Just not tonight. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Verse number nine. Turn to your neighbor and say, the devil wants you. Turn to another neighbor and tell him, the devil wants you. And he wants to kill. You don't have to tell him this. Steal and destroy you. Oh, Lord. Come on, Holy Ghost. I need you to help me right now. I need you to help me right now, Lord. Oh, Mama, I'm so scared to say this. <laughs> I heard Daddy say it, but I'm scared to say it. But if the devil wins, it's going to be over my dead body. If he wins, it's going to be over my dead body. He ain't going to have my family. He's not going to have my family. He ain't going to have my church. He's not going to have our people. He's not going to win. Because I read the back of the book. <laughs> Brother Terry, I read the back of the book. And it's heaven or hell. It's life or death. <laughs> oh, now y'all don't forget the Lord done promised me I'm going to live. <laughs> he promised me. I'll take that word. He promised it to me. Chapter 27, he promised it to me. You shall see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord promised that to me. But I'm coming to tell you, I'm going to fight the devil with everything I've got within me, Sister Pam. I'm going to fight him with every bit of truth. Uh, I'm going to learn as many scriptures as I can. Brother David, I've been memorizing them. Uh, I'm going to get the word in my heart. Uh, I'm going to come to church every time the doors are open. I'm going to keep coming to prayer meeting. I'm going to keep getting ready for Bible study. I'm going to keep showing up on Sunday and Sunday and Wednesday because me and the Lord, uh, we're going places.
For to this end also, Paul is saying to the Corinthian church, but I, the Lord is saying to this church tonight, for to this end also did I write that I might know the proof. Now I want you to think right now. Now I'm, I'm coming preaching words of encouragement, but there's some under the sound of my voice that you failed the first test. No, Brother David, he said, I did it to prove you. What James tells us, you taught it not long ago. My brethren, count it all joy. Give me that scripture, brother. It's there. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. You need to be excited even if you failed because the Lord come along to tell you tonight it was just a test. Oh, let me tell you something beautiful. You kids, plug your ears right now. I failed Algebra 1, and then I may passed it with a D. I failed Algebra 2, and then I passed it with a 59 and a half. Uh, they barely did pass me. But you know what? When I go to the store, Heidi, I still know how to do algebra. When I go to the store, I can figure percentages. I, I can help my kids with their homework. Uh, so what do you say you're telling me that for? I'm telling you just because you failed don't mean you didn't learn something. Uh, just because you fell down don't mean that God didn't come in to teach you something. Uh, and he brought me to tell you tonight uh, that just because you failed don't mean you lost. Uh, Micah told us how it works. Uh, rejoice not against me, uh, oh my enemy. For when I fall, uh, I shall arise. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Now turn to your neighbor and smile real big and say, we're going to make it. That I might know the proof of you, whether you be obedient in all things. The Lord's looking, you hear me right now, folks. The Lord's looking for some real people to work through. He ain't looking for somebody that can put on a good show. He's looking for somebody that's got it down in their heart. Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. Somebody that falls down today, but they're getting up tomorrow. I've told you all before, and I remember it well. I wasn't a very good trombone player, but I liked it. You kids that's here now, y'all think y'all was in a cool band. Y'all should have been in band when I was in there, 200 and something strong, black uniforms, uh, playing swinging on parade. It was beautiful, beautiful. But our band director told us, Brother Pete, because if you didn't practice and you didn't know your part, how, some of you other people that didn't practice and didn't know your part besides me. What do you do? You put the horn to your mouth. I played the trombone. And you just kind of peek at the next guy. Don't blow nothing. <laughs> Boy, we sound good, don't we? But our band director, whose name was Mr. Callaway at the time, he said, it's all right to make mistakes. But if you're going to make them, make them loud where I can hear them. Because if I can't hear them, I can't fix them. The Lord told me to tell you tonight, your mistakes might be loud, but that's all right. Because I'm looking for people that are right out in the open. Because them's the ones I can work with. Them sneaky peats, you can't work with them. You can't help them. No offense there. Your name ain't Pete anyway. Fred. E. Junior. See, y'all didn't know that, did you? <laughs> if running with the footman has wore you out, how do you expect to run with the horses? 
Because my plan is for you to not only run with the horses, but to outrun the horses. (laughs) Elijah said, get up and get your chariot because I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. (laughs) Sister Maria, the servant came back and said, I see a cloud. The size of a man's hand. Elijah said, that's good enough for me. (laughs) And he gird up his loins, Brother Rice. And the Bible said he ran ahead of Ahab's chariot into the streets of Jezreel. I come to tell you, you say, well, I ain't feeling a whole lot. It it don't take but a little. (laughs) About that much. About that much of faith. About that much, Brother Peter. And somebody's got to say, that's good enough for me. I'm gone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thought I was going to be short tonight. That shows you what I know. Verse 10, Brother Shannon. By the way, the title of my message tonight... Is called running with the big dogs. Verse number 10. Oh, Lord, I want you to work on somebody right now. There's a God, saints. There is a God. And he's working among us right now. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, For your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. We must learn to forgive with the same stringless pardon that we have learned to receive from Jesus Christ ourselves. We have to forgive as we ask him to forgive. We have to forgive with the same intent that we expect him to forgive us uh, and throw our sins behind him uh, as far as the east is from the west so far. And we, you hear me right now. I want you to think about this. There are people, I just showed you in the last scripture, this stuff is happening to you for a test. There are people that have been put into your life to test you according to the will of God. And if you do not forgive them, the devil wins. We have to especially forgive those that have been put in our lives to test us. There is no greater expression of love than to forgive. The death of Christ was because he loved us. The death of Jesus Christ was for one reason, because he had a desire to forgive. The devil, Brother McKinney, cannot comprehend that. The devil only operates in animosity and bitterness and guile and hatred and jealousy. That's all the devil knows how to operate in. Kill, steal, and destroy. And when we begin to allow the Holy Ghost to work through us uh, and begin to offer forgiveness uh, even when it hasn't been asked, we are in fact uh, allowing the person of Jesus Christ to shine through us. And we're not forgiving them necessarily because the flesh wants to, but because the Spirit does. Because you can't have the Spirit of God within you, the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ within you, unless you operate as He does. Satan. Next verse. Here's why we got to do that, saints. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. i got to move along. Satan's gunning for each of us. Now I want you to hear me something, Brother Billy. I know I make myself too vulnerable, but I'm about to again. We have all felt the influence of the devil. As we endeavor to go to another level. 
My wife and I don't even argue. Very, very rarely do we ever argue. But there has been animosity rising up in our house. You say, well, you're bad. No, for no reason. There's no reason for it. Nothing but to just jump up off the couch, walk in there and bite somebody's head off without even thinking of it. But the word tells me, Brother Billy, that I'm not ignorant of his devices. And when I'm praying, I realize, well, hold on a minute, that ain't me. Oh, no. Oh, you sorry sucker, you better bring something better than that. Because there's going to be peace in my home. There's going to be happiness in my home. There's going to be joy in my home. The devil don't belong in my home. Why y'all looking at me like I'm the only dummy that has problems in the household sometimes? We love each other. I love my wife dearly. She knows I do. I put my marriage up against anybody's. But sometimes I'm a moron. Because I, I let the devil's influence lead me. It's the flesh. That's what he uses. I bet y'all glad y'all gave me them cards this morning. Satan can only do lasting damage through sin. He can only hurt you through sin. That's why repentance is a Christian soldier's best friend. Give me Jude chapter 1. Y'all come to the music if you would. Y'all don't, don't stand yet. I may be a minute or two. Come on, musicians. Jude 1, 20 through 21. But ye, beloved, and when I hear beloved in the Bible, it's something just melts in me. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves. <laughs> Keep yourselves. In the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now, here, let me help you real quick. Y'all stand now. I'm done. I'm down to my last verses. I've been aware, Sister Eloise, I've been aware for a few weeks of things going on in the spirit world. I've been aware from the beginning of what the devil was going to try to do. And he's been working. I can come on many of your lives. Finances, health, relationships. All three cases the devil's been working. Amen? And I came to the realization, Brother Rice, that he's working. Then here's my problem. I'm not sure how to handle it. It's different things, Brother Pete and different situations, different people. And I've been praying. Lord knows I've been praying. I pray every way I know how, Sister Pam. But I found something in the Scripture, Brother David, another reason why we need the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 8, Brother Shannon, verse 26. I told you I'm going to help somebody tonight. If you make it to heaven, it's because you want to. He already wants you to. But when you decide to, likewise, the it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. <laughs> likewise. The Spirit also helpeth. 
our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray. I had another closing. I had another closing. I deleted it. The Lord laid this on my heart, led me right to it. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And it'll make you talk in tongues on your deathbed. In the valley of the shadow of death. And he that searcheth the hearts. God is for me. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. When we don't know. When we don't know, he does. All we know is there's a problem. And I don't know the answer. So come on, Holy Ghost. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints. According to the will of God, that's the Spirit of God within us, the Holy Ghost. My little children, I write these things to you that you sin not. But if you sin, we have an advocate. Oh, and I'm glad that he's just one. And the Spirit that works within me, when I don't have an answer, when I don't have a solution, where do I go?